Hello there. Welcome again to the Complete Painter. I'm Jeffrey Kraft, and this here is Mishka. <laughs> She's a good cat to have around the house. She's purring away because look what she caught today. That's right, it's a mouse, and we got this one by the tail. Well, if you have one of these laying around your house, you might want to stick around because we're going to show you another use for that besides emailing embarrassing photos of your boss taken at the company picnic. <laughs> Although I have to admit, that's a pretty good use for one of these, too. <laughs> the invention of the computer has made using photos even more valuable for painting reference. The combination of several photos makes painting from your imagination much easier. First, simple computer programs can often correct the inaccuracies of photos, making them much closer to what we normally see in real life. Second, the combination of photos opens up a whole new world of possibilities, since normally it may be easy to get the background subject we want, but not with the foreground subject we want as well. This is where taking a few minutes to learn how to edit your photos in a computer can be extremely helpful, or find someone who could do this for you. Just be sure and get a program that allows you to layer one photo on top of another. And even better, you can actually try adding new subjects to a painting that's already in progress. Drawing sketches for this may be okay for very basic compositional changes, but this leaves a lot to the imagination. When making major changes, I want to see what my actual painting will really look like as much as possible. Here I have a farm scene started, but never cared much for the horse positions much, so I'll try changing this with the computer. So first, take a new photo of your painting in its present state and you want to have all the colors of your painting in your photo, so you need to have all the colors in your lighting as well. We're using uh, natural daylight fluorescent bulbs, but because those tend to be a little on the cool side, I added a couple small halogen lights as well. And then I'll take care of the warmer frequencies. and have all your photos be digital or converted to digital so the computer can work with them. And before editing any files, copy them so you always have a backup to compare to. All new edits are going to be permanent. When combining photos, if the resolution of the original photos are different, change all the lower resolution photos to the value of the highest resolution before saving as a copy. Two photos might be four by five inches, but if one is a larger resolution, it will appear larger on your monitor. When selecting photos to combine, first look for photos with the right angle and perspective. Obviously, it's best to have a good close-up to see details, uh, but just make sure that the perspective is the same as everything else that's farther away. If adding a horse to the left of your painting, fine, or take a new photo with the horse to the left of the picture. The same is true whether the subject is far or near, high or low. For example, if the new added subject should appear far away, make the photo size small and move it closer to the horizon line. But placing a subject small and far away when it was originally shot close up is a serious amateur mistake. Our show on perspective is very helpful for those trying to combine photos. If it's difficult to judge multiple sizes for a subject, just apply very simple perspective like you might drawing fence posts. Just start with a size that looks good for the first post and simply run parallel lines to a vanishing point along the horizon line. The remaining posts must fit within those two lines. Since similar subjects have a generalized size, even something like horses can be sized the same way. 
Here we'll simply use the height of the horse's front leg up to the shoulder instead of a fence post. And if you can't find a proper photo to add to your painting, any primitive computer drawing you can make will still help you visualize your ideas. This wagon was drawn in our photo program and added on top just like our other photo layers. Now I'll play around adjusting the value, contrast, and colors of your new photo layers to match the lighting of your background. Our show on light sources can help you with these adjustments. An important note, before buying any photo edit program, make sure it has the layers and lasso crop features. The first allows us to layer images one on top of the other without merging them yet. The second allows us to cut out any unwanted background of an image before laying it on top of the first. Now that we have our subject sized and adjusted for our farm painting, the fun begins and we can play around with different combinations that look natural and maintain the mood of the piece. Now there are exceptions, but we try to keep important elements off from center. Doing this better represents how we randomly first come upon things in real life. This way of composing was really helpful since I discovered adding the horses with a person and a moving wagon just felt a little too busy for this piece. The wagon and horses would both be competing for our attention. Now for some paintings, all this activity would be just what the doctor ordered, but in this case, our intention was to invoke a call me effect for the viewer. So by removing the person, I could still keep the hay wagon if it was sitting still over by the barn, small and far away. Now the painting elements are simplified and our primary focus will be on these two slow moving horses. So the basic steps for composing with your photo program are Start with a background photo or photo of your existing painting. Find or take new photos of the subjects you may want to add to your painting, matching the distance, height, and position you desire. Save and work with copies of the original photo files, matching the resolution before saving. Crop, then copy and paste your new subject photos to your background photo, creating new layers. Position them similar to how they were taken originally. Subjects photographed far away are moved up and closer to the horizon line. Adjust the size to look appropriate. Keep them with the correct range left to right. Then adjust the value, contrast, color, and sharpness to match your background photo. Last, merge the layers to become one single reference photo. So what happens if we don't have one of these fancy schmancy programs with layers? Well, the thing is they're not so fancy schmancy after all. They're actually pretty affordable at $20 to $100. I saw them online if you do a search. Uh, just do a search for a photo editing software, comma, layers, and you'll find several. Or include the words reviews or compare in your search to quickly check brands side by side. So it's not such a... Uh, impossible task to be able to do this.